from the EWTN radio and television studios, this is EWTN Theology Roundtable, a conversation with the experts of EWTN's Department of Theology. Got questions about the liturgy, scripture, or tradition? They have the answers. Now, EWTN Theology Roundtable. Hello, everyone. Welcome again to EWTN's Theology Roundtable. We've got a great show for you today. We'll be opening up the phone lines uh, as soon as we can, and uh, I think you're going to love the topic that we'll be talking about today. So first of all, I want to say hello to, uh, from our theology department, Laura Dittis. Hello. Welcome to the program, and our uh, ladies first. You Thank understand. you. <laughs> okay. And uh, Colin Donovan, our vice president of theology. Colin. Hey, Tom. Good to be here. Uh, glad that, that you're here, and I'm really glad about this topic. Here is the topic, unless you become as little children. Now, this really resonates with me. Maybe it's uh, my own immaturity. I don't know. But I just <laughs> love the, the simple approach, or as St. Therese would say, the little way. So uh, Colin's going to uh, kind of set the stage for us here. Laura will be uh, chiming in as well. And your phone calls are very, very important. Here's our phone number, 833-288-EWTN. That's 833-288-3986. If you're listening to us uh, outside of North America, you'll want to dial the U.S. country code and then 205 271 2985. You can also text the letters EWTN to 55000. Wait for our response and then text us your first name and your brief question. Message and data rates may apply. You can also shoot us an email if you prefer that, ETR, EWTN Theology Roundtable, ETR at EWTN.com. So, Colin, unless you become as little children, this is a fascinating topic for me. Yeah, and it's a, a very scripturally rooted one, in fact, so rooted that uh, even though we use the term spiritual uh, childhood more in the modern era, in the last several hundred years, uh, it actually, the ideas and the themes go back right to the very first century. Uh, and it's the, the idea is simple, and, and our Lord gives it to us himself. In Matthew 18, he says, I say, truly, I say to you, unless you turn and become like little children, you will never enter the kingdom of God. And Luke uh, quotes him so similarly. And so throughout the New Testament in the Gospels and in the letters, you see this uh, referenced again. So for instance, the, the, gospel, the, uh, the Apostle John is a big apostle of this idea, constantly mm -hmm. uh, using the term childhood. And so we can, we can start with his, again, citation of our Lord in the, in the third chapter of uh, the Gospel of John. When he, our Lord, is asked by Nicodemus about uh, being born again, because our Lord had said, unless you be born again, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. And Nicodemus asked, can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? And Jesus answers, unless one is born of water and the spirit, uh -huh. he cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. So there we have the idea of a child coming into the world and a child born of the Spirit, born of the Holy Spirit. And so already we have in the Gospel of John during the years of our Lord's mission, we have this idea planted as, and we'll see that it's, it's really planted throughout our Lord's ministry and also uh, by the apostles afterwards. Uh, St. John carries that on and we know that he himself, who is, you know, is called the beloved disciple, uh, our, uh, St. John thought a great deal of that because he thought to record down, inspired by the Holy Spirit, that scene at the foot of the cross where our Lord says to his mother, Mother, behold your son, and to John, behold your mother. And from that day, John himself tells us the disciple took her into his home. In other words, this maternal relationship with Mary is a relationship with a child, a child of God. And John saw himself, and we think of him even today, as that, that the epitome of that disciple. And so uh, there in his gospel, we see it many times in the other letters, such as uh, in his letters, he speaks very much of the members of Christ's flock as children, little children mm -hmm. or children. And so this theme runs throughout. But the, here's the interesting thing. The Son of God himself 
Now, right there is your yes. first clue. The yes. Son of God himself mm -hmm. undertook this as a human being. St. Paul tells us that though he was in the form of God, he did not equality with God, meaning the Father. Who else could he mean sure. but the Father? A thing to be grasped, but emptied himself, taking the, taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men. He became a human child in the womb of Our Lady. And, of course, a child has a mother, Mary, as John was given a mother, and a father, the, fa the, the father, the first person of the Trinity. So this is an important element of this to remember, that Christ himself, from all eternity, is the Son, is the Word of the Father, and finds in the Father his, the source of the divine nature, and carries out the will of the Father as he says, For I came not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. Mm -hmm. Christ himself sets the example of the childhood that we should undertake ourselves. Uh, and we see this very much in the Gospel of, of Matthew. It's really an epitome of this teaching. And in the Sermon on the Mount, he relays all the things which our Lord said about the total confidence and trust we got, we should have in God, in his daily providence, in his providing form, as he provides for the birds of the air. And so in, in so many ways. And then in that great prayer, which is re part of the whole Sermon on the Mount, mm -hmm. our Father who art in heaven. Everything comes from the Father and goes to the Father. And it comes to, from the Father through the Son and the Spirit. And eventually we will go back, as St. Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians 15, we will go back to God the Father through Christ and God will be all in all. This is the glory of being a child of the kingdom that in the end, after the resurrection, we will be all in all by God, with God. The Son will always have him by nature, but we will have the Father by grace. And so the whole of the Christian existence and the Christian life and the spirituality of the centuries goes upon this theme. And I want to just home in for a second on that text in Matthew. Unless you turn, unless you turn yes. and become children of God. So you turn by repenting. And as the Apostle said, on, by repenting and being baptized. And baptism is by water and the Holy Spirit, that sign of being born and dying in Christ and being raised, and we're coming out through the Holy Spirit as a child of God. The two go together, baptism and, and the plunging and the coming of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. All the spiritualities of the church, whether you're a Franciscan or a Dominican or a Salesian or a Jesuit or whatever, are illustrative of this theme of childhood, to give up everything and let God be us in us more and more. To go through a life of penance and penitence and giving up first sin, the first thing we have to give up is sin, but then we go beyond that in the penitential way, as authors have described it, the first way of the three ways of the spiritual life. Mm -hmm. And then we grow in God through the illuminative way, and finally in the unitive way are we, we become at least one in God in our wills mm -hmm. and we'll wait only death and the resurrection uh, at the end of time. So. Uh, it's a doctrine which is central to the gospel. And we have this year a couple of remarkable examples. We're going to talk about them. We're going to talk about an obvious example, uh, St. Therese of Lisieux. Sure. And that is the children of Fatima. So this is the 100th anniversary this year of the death of Jacinta. Last year was the 100th anniversary of the death of, death of Francisco. Mm -hmm. They died in... Uh, 17, 18, and 19, and I think the, the flu ran through 20, uh, which is our anniversary year this year. And it killed literally tens of millions of people around the world, and so they, they were killed by it. And they are examples for us of living this completely. Once Our Lady had told them what she wanted, once their mother had told them what she wanted of them, they practiced that and they became saints the youngest child saints in the history of the church who weren't, for instance, martyrs killed in the mm -hmm. arms of their mother mm -hmm. or killed as children together with the rest of their families. So uh, this is a beautiful spirituality, and we want to learn more about it today. Absolutely, and we want to hear from you as well. This is your show as well. You know, ca Catholic means universal. So your, our phone lines are open right now at 833-288-EWTN. That's 833 
888-288-3986. Would love to hear from you. You can also text the letters EWTN to 55000. Absolutely uh, a, a real pleasure. And, and before we go to break here, uh, would you say that uh, this approach to life, unless you become as little children, don't you find that rather freeing? I, I think it is, and I, that's why the greatest peace and joy is found uh, in those who have made that total commitment to God. Uh, we see it especially in, the, in our holy religious sisters and priests and so on. Uh, we always commented here about the faces of our own nuns. And, sure. You know, and mother over the years, that, that glow, that childlike love of Jesus and pro proximity to him constantly. Yes, indeed. And so those are our greatest examples. But in the, in the laity, too, are found many examples of this kind of total surrender. Lots to unpack in this edition of EWTN's Theology Roundtable. Love to hear from you today at 833-288-EWTN. That's 833-288. 288-3986 to stay with us. Welcome back to EWTN Theology Roundtable on EWTN Radio and Television. Join our conversation with your question or comment. Call us toll free 833-288-EWTN. That's 833-288-3986. Outside the U.S. and Canada, call 1-205-271-2985 or send us an email, etr at ewtn.com. What a great topic this is, unless you become as little children. That's our topic this time around on EWTN's Theology Roundtable. We'll give you that phone number one more time and then we'll uh, dive in a little bit deeper here. And that is 833 288-EWTN, that's 833-288-3986, or uh, as we say, uh, send us an email, uh, etr at ewtn.com. So uh, I want to come to Laura now, and we were talking earlier about uh, St. Therese. How does St. Therese depict what we're talking about here, spiritual childhood? Sure. So in a lot of ways, St. Therese is the one where we hear the topic with the most. Um, she wrote in her autobiography, which has become a modern spiritual classic, Story of a Soul. She she talks about this, and uh, Story of a Soul is really accessible to a lot of people. I read it for the first time when I was 13. I just reread it recently, and rereading it as an adult is a lot different than when you read it sure. as a younger person. So I highly recommend that our viewers pick this up. Um, she speaks that of how rather than, quote, being discouraged, unquote, um, in, and then she quotes again, in comparing herself with the saints, concluded that she may aspire to sanctity in spite of her littleness. So she's looking at these great saints and she's thinking, how can I do this? And um, she's gonna tell us. So she takes courage in the words of scripture and entrusts herself to the arms of Jesus, which she speaks as a kind of elevator or lift, depending on which translation you read. We're, mm -hmm. we're more familiar with elevators here. Um, she speaks of her way to heaven as remaining little and becoming still less. And this way is not just for children. St. Therese writes the following to Father, Father Bellier, one of her spiritual brothers. Quote, when I shall have arrived at port, I will teach you how to travel, dear little brother of my soul, on the stormy sea of the world, with the surrender and love of a child who knows his father loves him and cannot leave him alone in the hour of danger. The way of simple love and confidence is really made for you. Mm. And that comes from an epilogue to the story of a soul. Very good. And I, I know that uh, there are a number of uh, specific characteristics uh, that St. Therese has outlined here. There are six of them, correct? Sure. So um, Father John Hardin, who um, is really, he's, he was very well known for his uh, ability to elucidate um, catechesis. Mm -hmm. He takes three character, six characteristics of her spiritual childhood from different papal documents and, um, and provides the following six. So the spiritual child, quote, knows nothing of spiritual pride, unquote. So the spiritual child is humble. The spiritual child, quote, realizes that natural means cannot achieve sanctity, unquote. And then here he's speaking of the need for prayer, sacraments, cooperation with grace. Mm -hmm. And then thirdly, 
quote, has no illusions of self-reliance in danger and temptation, unquote, so childlike dependence on a living father's protection. And then, quote, presupposes a lively faith in God's existence, unquote, so um, is believing, mm -hmm. um, has a spirit, practical confidence in God's power and mercy. And then six, has confident recourse to divine providence. So it's really a nice layout of, oh, yeah. of those uh, characteristics there. Oh, very good. And our phone lines are open right now. If you would like to talk about a spiritual childhood, uh, it's a uh, just a wonderful thing to ponder, to pray about, and then just to say, yes, I'm all in. Here's our phone number, 833-288-EWTN. That's 833-288-3986. You can also text the letters EWTN to 55000. Now, Laura, as we were saying earlier, uh, St. Therese does not have the market cornered here. No. Uh, there have been a number of examples of, you know, looking at life in this way, looking at our faith life this way of spiritual childhood. Can you give us some examples? Sure. So um, we see spiritual childhood in a lot of the saints. So uh, Colin brought up uh, Jacinta and Francisco, the mm -hmm. children of Fatima, and um, they prayed childlike prayers that were taught by the angel and Our Lady, um, prayers of adoration of God, reparation to God and for others. Um, and then they were told by the angel, make everything you can a sacrifice. So they, they really took up this little way of, of offering everything to the Lord. Um, and then in St. Teresa of Calcutta, um, not everyone knows she was actually named after St. Therese of Lisieux too. Um, we see this uh, characteristic of doing little things with great love, um, her daily adoration of the Eucharist, a life of littleness and poverty, and in serving the poorest of the poor. So. Um, just, you know, making yourself, yeah. making yourself little that God might be glorified. I see this key word coming back over and over again. Little, little, <laughs> little. <laughs> Pretty laid out there, isn't it? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, it's a, I mean, John the Baptist even, we could say, would be the first example mm -hmm. of this little way. He says, you know, I must decrease that Christ may increase. And, and so we don't usually think of John the Baptist as a, as a spiritual child, but he was. I mean, if you asked him... Uh, if he, he would he would definitely be in that ball, ballpark sure, as well. Sure. And uh, we also want to hit uh, St. Teresa of the Trinity, uh, who I'm not as familiar with as some of these other saints. Sure. So St. Elizabeth of the Trinity was a Discalced Carmelite, and um, she lived from 1880 to 1906. So she came um, after Therese, but not a lot after yeah, either. Yeah. Um, she wrote in a 1903 letter to Germaine de Jamel, a 15-year-old girl on her birthday, she writes, quote, tell him that you want only to love him, that you want him to do good, everything, want him to do everything in you because you are too little. It is so good to be God's little child, to let yourself be carried by him all the time, to rest in his love. Let us really ask for this grace of simplicity and abandonment that belonged to Sister Therese of the Child Jesus, unquote. And note, she says Sister Therese there. Yes. So she's not yet canonized, but she's still recognized as um, a good one to follow. Beautiful. And then we have another quote from St. Elizabeth of the Trinity. She says, I think that in heaven, my mission will be to draw souls by helping them to go out of themselves in order to cling to God by a holy, simple and loving movement and to keep them in this great silence within which will allow God to communicate himself to them and to transform them into himself, unquote. Wow. Fantastic. Well, we are uh, broadcasting today EWTN Theology Roundtable, if you would like to be a part of this discussion. Uh, and we're talking about spiritual childhood here uh, and the simplicity of it all, which is very attractive to an awful lot of people, me. <laughs> Do give us a call at 833-288-EWTN. That's 833-288-3986. I want to give a shout out to all of, uh, all of you who are watching us right now on YouTube and Facebook Live. We are streaming there right Right now, in fact, we just got a text, a question from Barbara, who is watching us on YouTube. She says, St. Ther St. Therese's little way has so influenced my walk has, uh, that I'm actually thinking of approaching the priest, my priest at our church, and suggesting a workshop for the church uh, for the, to, to further go into the little way. I think mm -hmm. that's a great idea. Yeah, it is. I've never heard. Have you ever heard or seen that? But. You know, you can take, just as you can have a scripture study, you can take a book, 
Uh, and there have been book clubs around the network here where guys or girls get together and, mm -hmm. you know, and read books and talk about the subject. And you can take a book like The Story of a Soul or maybe one of the writings of Elizabeth of the Trinity, and you can discuss it and do that and do it in a formal setting in a parish. So I think that's a great mm -hmm. idea to get people interested in that. And maybe uh, it might be a different way to observe Lent, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, to learn and to grow in your spiritual life is certainly a Lenten practice because you have to, as we said earlier, you have to turn, mm -hmm. that's the penitence part, and become, that's the grace part. And so those come together. Our will has to embrace the penitence, usually before we get very far with the, gra the grace working in us, at least well. Do you think this uh, this whole idea of the little way, as far as St. Therese goes, do you think that uh, sprang from the influence of her own parents, who were very godly people? I think so. I mean, it's often said that, uh, we didn't mention this author, but um, I think at some point they'll put up on the screen the names of some books that our catalog has. And, and one that influenced me very early on, which I just love, is Jean-Pierre de Caussade. He was a Jesuit that lived a little bit before Therese's time. And he wrote, uh, it goes by different, abandonment to divine providence, oh, yes. self-abandonment to mm -hmm. divine providence. Um, in one of the biographies of the little flower, St. Therese of Lisieux, it used, and I'm using the language in there, although I'd probably use this myself, this particular book was a rage, in quotes, in all of the Carmelite monasteries in France. And so it's quite likely that Therese encountered this and adapted it in her own way. You know, we read in the book, the, in her own autobiography, how, you know, the idea of doing everything for God, picking up a pin or taking a flower. Yes. You need flowers for the table, you take a flower. You can offer everything to God. We think that our daily routine offer gives nothing in it that can be offered to, offered to God. Everything in it. It's all in how you look it's at all. it, right? Yeah. yeah. And she had a great love for souls, too. So it wasn't just that she was doing this for herself, but mm -hmm. she was offering it for others, for their salvation, for the glory of God. Right. What so much so thing. she wanted to be a missionary, and she didn't get to be. But I think it was John Paul II who made her one of the patrons of missionary work. Got to love that. After the fact, she yes. got it. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, I mean, Exhibit A, Story of a Soul. Yes, there exactly. it is. Exactly. That's had more effect probably than anything she could have done in Indochina, which is where the French were sending a lot of their uh, missionaries, places like Vietnam and Laos, which are we sure. know today. All right. It's EWTN's Theology Roundtable. We have uh, lines open for you right now at 833-288-EWTN. That's 833-288-3986. Uh, quick question here before we go to break. This is uh, from Nancy watching us on YouTube who says, does become like little children describe the virtue of humility? Or is it is it the same thing or is it a little bit different? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Um, so we did have that come up in the points from Father Hardin. Um, I'd say, uh, well, the first one uh, knows nothing of spiritual pride, so it's humble. So um, I guess as in a, in a simple way, the answer is, mm -hmm. is yes. Yeah. He yeah. uses a different term, too, doesn't he, than uh, spiritual childhood, as I recall. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm not... Uh, I don't have child, it in front of child me. Childlikeness or something like he, that. He also does use that elsewhere, yes. Yeah, so you, you can describe it in there. Humility is a virtue with a long history. We know what that means, the humus, to, to lower sure. oneself. Mm -hmm. And that's certainly part of childhood. But, you know, spiritual childhood has one objective, the Father. Mm -hmm. yes. Humility is something we show to each other. And a little humility goes a long way, doesn't it? For most of us, that's about what we give, a little bit of humility. But we can all try further, and we can exactly. all try more yeah. Uh, yeah. To, to approach this, this little way of St. Therese and, and all the other wonderful uh, holy men and women of God that we've been talking about here. All right, we've got a line open for you right now if you want to jump in on this edition of EWTN Theology Roundtable. Our phone number, 833-288-EWTN. That's 833 833- 288-3986. You can also text the letters EWTN to 55000 or shoot us an email, etr at EWTN.com. Back in just a few moments with lots more on this edition of EWTN's Theology Roundtable.
Welcome back to EWTN Theology Roundtable on EWTN Radio and Television. Join our conversation with your question or comment. Call us toll-free, 833-288-EWTN. That's 833-288-3986. Outside the U.S. and Canada, call 1-205-271-2985 or send us an email, etr at ewtn.com. All right, we've got some uh, quotable quotes coming up here in just a few moments from Colin and Laura. First of all, let's get to the phones at 833-288-EWTN. We're going to begin here with Barbara in Brooklyn, uh, checking us out today on YouTube. Hey, Barbara, what's on your mind today? Hi, uh, I'm a, a, sort of a, a follower of a little way. Uh, I'm reading a, 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 a book called A Still to Childhood, and I find that um, the the idea of um, the little way is being very encouraging in my life. I mean, it's, it's like I can think of, uh, of God so much closer as my father. And when, when I do something that I should have done, or, or if I do something, if I have a question, so I can go and sit in his lap and, and tell him what happened. I mean, she kind of gives you these little, these little uh, things you can do to make yourself closer to God because he truly is your father. Um, it's a very beautiful way um, and very, very encouraging as a person living in the world. Mm-hmm. Beautiful. Yes. Yeah. Well, thank you, Barbara, for your witness. I think um, he's uh, St. Therese has really been an inspiration for many, including a lot of canonized saints. Um, I heard someone recently say that devotion to St. Therese is actually a good sign of possibly becoming canonized one day. Uh-huh. So, um, so you're in good company, but, um, but really just this surrender to Jesus and to being childlike is, um, is, is really, I think something that mother Angelica made her own too. mother Angelica, when she was younger, she had also had a devotion to St. Therese. Um, not everyone knows this, but one of the healings in her life, she went to visit, uh, uh, Rotowise, yes, Rota Wise. for canonization. Right, sure. so yeah. she visited Rotowise, and Rotowise gave her a novena to Saint Therese, and um, had her promise that if she was healed through that novena, to promote to promote devotion to Saint Therese. And so, um, it, I think Mother Angelica has definitely done that. Um, but at the same time, uh, yes, there's definitely this company, this communion mm-hmm. of the saints, where everyone. Um, it's not all about St. Therese, it's not all about um, any particular canonized person, but it's really about the Heavenly Father, about sure, this childhood of, of the communion of saints. And I, I notice, and, and Barbara, thank you so much for your call. Uh, you know, when, when she was talking about being devoted to the Father, not everybody, I hate to say it, but not everybody grows up with a great dad. Uh, sometimes right, they're absentee you know. dads or mentally absentee, even though they're standing right there. Yeah, and that, that, I mean, that's certainly, you know, part of, uh, you don't, you can almost speak of that as an element of the psychosis of our age. Mm-hmm. Uh, another element is the busyness, the distractedness of our age, that we have no focus. Uh, and, of course, uh, a lot of secular people and even many Christians, Catholics, will, will talk about, and this is certainly a very common thing in psychology, you know, they'll recommend Zen or transcendental meditation or sure. mindfulness, which has, a, you, you know, all of these things which are basically a self-reflection. Uh, I think there's enough self-reflection in our society. More than enough. To, more than <laughs> enough. What Therese and Brother Lawrence and other of the spiritual, Brother Lawrence, practice of the presence of God, practices of the presence is God-centered. It's not about... Oh me, oh my! I have this problem. I gotta get calm. I gotta get all my my uh, neurons working in the right. No, we would uh, we would not have the psychotic society that we have if everybody stayed close to God, pursued the Father, rested in Him from yes. time to time. Uh, we wouldn't have the psychological, psychiatric, and other problems which we have. In fact, there's a there, there's a quote from uh, Benedict the Fifteenth, uh, who lived, was the Pope uh, during the early part of the uh, 20th century, mm-hmm. 
And he is noted because he's the one who was the pope during the First World War. And so he had to deal with a world uh, at war with itself, as it were, in the way today yeah. we are have uh, different issues mm -hmm. largely. Uh, and Pope Benedict was thinking of him as well when he, uh, when he took the name Benedict as Pope. And he said th that the, regarding the way of the little way of uh, St. Therese of Lisieux, this is a call to the faithful of every nation, no matter what be their age, sex, or state of life, to enter wholeheartedly upon this way which led Sister Therese of the Child Jesus to the summit of holiness. And uh, as Barbara put it so well, into the arms of the Father, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we would find more peace, more relaxation and uh, surrender of our troubles by going to the Father than we would by any hu merely human practice. And oftentimes human practices are useful and helpful medically or otherwise. But, you know, at the same time, if it's not also deeply and profoundly about God, uh, it will be temporary. Sure. It will be a Band-Aid. All right. Barbara, thank you so much for your call. We do appreciate that. And that opens up a line for you right now at 833-288-EWTN. That's 833-288-3986. EWTN's Theology Roundtable in progress here with uh, Colin Donovan and Laura Dittis. Let's go now to Art in Leominster, Massachusetts, listening on one of our great affiliates there, WQPH 89.3. Hello, Art. What's on your mind today? I um, I love 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 this program and and, uh, and I hope that you follow up this this theme because it's really a true source of joy um, and and it's leading to everything that's countercultural. I mean, you know, we're all so bought to more and bigger and material and, and mm -hmm. little treat that leads us to you know to the little is you know the, you know find joy and particularly. Um, the part about humility. Um, I just finished a, a very brief book, and it was very funny, called Humility Rules, based on the rules of humility by um, St. Benedict. Mm -hmm. It's a very short book, and it's written by um, Father Augustine Vetta, V-E-T-T-A. And uh, it was just wonderful. It just, it just, it's a paradigm shift of you know the world's people mm -hmm. taught me to success talk about myself sure myself up. sure it's right, yeah. art art you are right on the money and i think i think we can learn from a number of different sources right we we can and i mean certainly this idea of of littleness and and returning to the little things you know this is the natural law many people in the world realize in their busy lives they want more time with their family, more time with their spouses. They need to settle down. And they think of the little things as, you know, walk in the country or something like this. So nature itself is telling us we need to do this. Giving us a, way. a cue. Mm -hmm. It's a giving us. God, through the nature he created and mm -hmm. the nature that we have, is telling us to do that. We are basically in rebellion from that, too. But here we have supernature. We have divine revelation. Uh, through the contemplation which the saints have made and have systematized in ways of thinking and praying and so on, we have that to guide us too. And that leads to the, a profound peace as well, in fact, a greater peace. Because, sure. But, but the, the principle of returning to the littleness is a very, I think, important one, whether on a natural level or a supernatural it, level. And Art, too, was on to something where he talks about the need for this in society. It's so easy to build ourselves up or try to have the latest and greatest and look at me. But um, Pius IX actually speaks of how spiritual childhood could reform society. So not just individuals seeking holiness, but, but society as a whole. Mm -hmm. He says, quote, if this way of spiritual childhood were practiced everywhere, it would bring about the reform of human society, unquote. And that just gives us hope. Oh, yeah. So, mm -hmm. um, Absolutely. You, you know, maybe going to your neighbor with Story of the Soul might not be the way to go. But if they see something in you that they, they, they you know, it's like, oh, you know, they, what, what's different here? Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. so there's something about simplicity and mm -hmm. that's really attractive to you. Oh, absolutely. And, and on this point, uh, that's essentially the message of Fatima, if you get into it. Mm -hmm. 
because Our Lady, is, as the children were the examples of we mentioned, you know, Our Lady is asking us to go back to this deep-centered concern, love of and service of God and of neighbor. And Marian specifically is asking us in, in other examples in history like Louis de Montfort and so on in his spirituality, uh, and that is to become, you know, like the little children in her family, because she is the mother, as I noted earlier. Mm -hmm. And it's this way that the world will be reformed. Uh, now, we we think that the weapons of war and all these things and the programs of cultures and societies and governments will reform the world. But no, it's really this kind of surrender, uh, which uh, Therese certainly encouraged, and we can draw that conclusion. And, but Our Lady of Fatima specifically asked for that we have this uh, holy littleness, slavery even has mm -hmm. been called, by which we are totally bound to God and that this way our influence spreads further and further and further in a society and in a culture and around the world. Yeah, uh, Art, thank you so much for your call. We do appreciate that. And before we uh, uh, finish up on Art, I would be remiss if I didn't mention that book that Art mentioned, Humility Rules uh, by Father Augustine Weta, is available from EWTN's religious catalog, which is EWTNRC.com. You could do what I just did. I just typed Weta in the search bar, and boom, there it is. Right, and you had the same catch I did because we had him here as a retreat master sure for did. the uh, employee retreat a while yeah, back. Yeah, absolutely. All right, we do have a line open for you right now at EWTN's Theology Roundtable. Our phone number 833-288-EWTN. That's 833-288-EWTN or 3986 if you prefer. Uh, yeah, we're talking about spiritual childhood. And Laura, I know that you've got a, a quote queued up from someone who means a lot to me, and that is uh, St. John Paul II. Oh, let's see. I, I don't have it handy. Colin, do you have it for me? Uh-oh. We, we had a little... Pitching, pitching here to the <laughs> cross the team. Oh, boy. Well, John Paul II did something that the, in the church... Y humility, among, right? Well, I was, I was going to go back a little bit further and give okay. the history here, because I like to do that. Please. And that is that in the church, there were, we think of uh, women, doctors of the church. There were like 33 doctors of the church. Mm -hmm. Uh, basically, those who did, t whose teaching and everything are exemplarily witness to the subject and the things they wrote about. And we think of Aquinas, the angelic doctor. We think of, uh, you know, the other other of them. We think of among women, uh, Teresa of Avila <laughs> and uh, Catherine of Siena. Uh -huh. uh, but there haven't been many women doctors, and John Paul II declared Saint Therese a doctor of the Church, and in the document by which he promulgated that, mm -hmm. Divini uh, Amoris Scientia, uh, he says, the experience of being the father's adoptive children in Jesus. This is the most authentic, me authentic meaning of spiritual childhood. That is the experience of divine filiation under the movement of the Holy Spirit. There's that proceeding from God, yes. that filiation within God of the Son. Through spiritual childhood, one experiences that everything comes from God, returns to him, and abides in him for the salvation of all, in a mystery of merciful love. Such is the doctrinal message taught and lived by this saint. And I think the, uh, an important feature of this quote is this pointing to experience. We can have a lot of knowledge about the little way, and knowledge is beautiful. Scientia is beautiful. But Aquinas and others say that the highest knowledge is wisdom, mm. to know something as it is. This is of La Therese is a wisdom. Come to know God as he is through prayer, through this turning to him as your child. This gives not simply a head knowledge, but this gives us a wisdom. Mm -hmm. We have the same thing in Genesis. Adam knew Eve and the intimate and depth and profundity of that knowledge. Mm -hmm. And so we are called to that as well. And the Pope is, is, is telling us that about this doctrine of the spiritual childhood. Beautiful. And I think, too, it, it's helpful to remember that St. Therese did not go to college. She... That's true. She spent time in the Lord's presence. She got to know the scriptures very well. But 
Um, so it shows you that the little way can really, the Lord really makes himself ab available to those who are little as well. Yes, indeed. And, and wasn't yep. she the one who had to petition the Pope because she wanted to get in earlier That's than right. the rules right. allowed? Yep. <laughs> she, he she, told she, her to she, wait, as I recall. She was little right. but bold. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> All right, it is EWTN's Theology Roundtable. Let's go to the phones now and, and uh, talk with Sister Renee, who's listening in New Orleans uh, on Catholic Community Radio. Her order is the Missionary of Saint of the Sacred Heart of Jesus. Sister Renee, thanks for calling, and what is on your mind today? Well, St. Therese is my girlfriend, and um, we're just on uh, we're you're, you're real close, I, I like should say, hey, girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> and um, she, of course, gives me lots of roses. And um, a number of years ago, I was in uh, Chicago working on in our hospital, Columbus Hospital, and I was right after work, I was going to go over and ask the provincial if I could work on my master's degree. And um, so just as I'm leaving work, something happened that never happened before, and that was one of the cleaning staff came up to me with a big bouquet of roses. Oh, boy. And she uh -oh. said, oh, here, uh -oh. sister, one of the patients left this behind. Would you like to take it? <laughs> and I said, oh, yes, 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 yes. And uh, so, of course, I walked off, and I was able to do my master's degree at Loyola. And um, then she presents roses in other forms. She yeah, sometimes we'd have banquets to award different people and mm -hmm. go from our, our hospital. And at, at the banquet, the butter was in the form of a rose. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, she's wonderful. Beautiful. You know, she is, and that's an experience that many devotees of St. Therese have found, because in God's providence, the, 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 the timing of these things cannot be anything other than, uh, than a grace, yeah. you know, a sign even, as it were. Um, and so that's become historically connected to her, mm -hmm. and, and, and many, many Catholics who love her have experienced that as well. As a, as a sign that you've been heard. I don't think necessarily that you're going to get what you want, but that you've been heard and that sure. she's become, she is your advocate. And those signs and wonders and miracles, if you will, uh, they're all around us. Sometimes we just have to open our eyes, right? That's right, yes. All right. Uh, Sister Renee, thank you so much for your call. We do appreciate that. And we just got a uh, text here from someone listening on uh, Phoenix, is uh, listening on YouTube. Phoenix says, uh, when everybody here was talking about transcendental meditation, I think they really hit it on the nail because God is a person, three persons actually, and he wants a relationship with us. You know, absolutely. Uh, and, and the other element of that is that John Paul II spoke strongly about the, the integrity of the human person. Now, we aren't integrated because of our sinfulness and the fall and so on, but that's the objective. And one of the things we have to do, as he writes in, the, in uh, his person and act or acting person, which he wrote uh, before he was uh, cardinal and pope, uh, is we, we, we have to, when we reflect, we take ownership of our, uh, of our sinfulness, of our faults. We don't disassociate ourselves from them. Right. And so that's an important element of the Christian life, to reflect on happening in the day. Now, in the end, we do, as an earlier caller said, and a beautiful thing about being in the arms of, of the Father. In the end, we say, okay, here I am as I am, Father. Help me to change. Help me to overcome this or this cross or this difficulty, this life situation. We, we do that. But we never dissociate ourselves from anything that, that happens in us as some of these kinds of prayer methods and psychological methods seem to do. Sure. Uh, now, I'm not a psychologist or anything, but I know that this is the doctrine of prayer of the church and, and how we, you know, we should be centered on God, not on simply ourselves and our activities. Uh, you know, the, the program, the radio program, Take Two with Jerry and Debbie, got a, got a call from a woman a few months ago who was talking about, that was a horrible thing, she was talking about being abused as a child in just about every way you could imagine, including physically, and uh, she went on to marry a man, and that was 
terrible and everything mm -hmm. else. Uh, so she finally wound up in therapy, and it was it was a therapist that that brought her to God, as it as it mm -hmm. were. And so she eventually was able to make peace with her father and to forgive him, which is so huge. Uh, and then you know went on, and that was she said that was one of the greatest gifts of her whole life was, was being able because she was missing that daddy, that daddy. That's right. Yeah. That was that was one of the earliest earliest times that I'd heard that idea. Mm -hmm. Is uh, Jeff Caven, Cavins talked about it a lot when back when he did Life on the Rock, mm -hmm. how in his time away from the church, you know, it was really you know angry at Dad, and then is that God with yeah. God relationship with God, and that dissipated and everything. I think this is part of our culture of our society. When you hear all this raging at patriarchy, part patriarchy and some of this stuff in this culture, uh, a lot of it is rebellion from God, from God. Now they may say it's rebellion from men, abusive men or men in history, uh, the power that has destroyed cultures. And there's certainly a lot of truth in no any doubt. of those criticisms. No doubt. But it's ultimately a rebellion from the Father who has ordered the universe. And so uh, I, I think that we all have some of those rebellions in us, uh, not just those whose specific rebellion is their experience of their own father. Their own father, I as a father, I'm not God the Father. And I hope my child would not think of me in any other way than, you know, and I'm pretty sure that they don't think of me in any other way. <laughs> very good, very good. Now, uh, earlier I put uh, Laura on the spot. Fortunately, she did not give me the deer in the headlights look, so that's a good thing. Uh, but do you have a quotable quote or two that you could share with us on this topic? Well, you know, I think, as I said at the top of the program, Scripture is abundantly full of this. We're coming up on Lent here in a couple mm -hmm. weeks. Mm -hmm. You know, when was the last time you read meditatively the Sermon on the Mount mm. and the, the surrender that Christ encourages us to have to his Father? Um, you know, if you're one of those people with electronic means or even get on Google or one of these Bible sites or something like that, to, to look at all the instances of child and child ch children and the Father in Scripture, in, in the New Testament at least, because the revelation of God as Father is in the New, is in the New Testament. Until then, God meant one thing, God. Mm -hmm. Now we know that in God there is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. But yet we continue to say God because God the Father is the ultimate so source. And so when we read the scripture and we read those instances where, where, uh, where God the Son is saying these things, we can say, well, he's saying that of himself in the order of nature, in the order of the nature, his divine nature. Mm -hmm. Uh, but he's living it himself in the order of human nature, in that nature he received from his mother, yes. Mary. And so he's giving us the teaching, he's giving us the example, and he's following the example. And so one final thought on the scripture of it that reinforces this idea. In the te Ten Commandments, the Decalogue, the first commandment is, thou shalt have no other god we would understand God the Father sure. before you. The first of the commandments about human behavior toward other human beings is honor thy father and thy mother. The principles of families is the same principle of the Godhead, the Father. And so we have to have that understanding of things. We must have that respect. Now, authority, father authority can be exercised by mothers. It can be exercised by women in culture and society. The, the, the point is that this humility that we ought to have, this docility to authority, to good authority, mm -hmm. to truthful authority, is something that is part of this, what has been called the mystery of the mystery pietatis, the mystery of piety, or the mystery iniquitatis, the mystery of iniquity. We are either showing that respect to the order established by the Father, or we are in disrespect from it. The devil is in disrespect. Mm. We get to choose which side we want to be sure, on. Sure, sure. Any closing thoughts, Laura? Sure. So I have um, St. Therese speaking to Mother Agnes, and she speaks very simply about um, what spiritual childhood is. And she says, oh, rather about the little way, she says, quote, it is the way of spiritual childhood, the way of trust and complete surrender. And so 
Um, if you're looking to follow the little way, trust, complete surrender, that's, that's basically it. Okay. And I'm sure there's plenty of uh, resources online where uh, folks can look for more information about spiritual childhood and, uh, you know, a approaching this as a little child. Yeah, and we, meant, we mentioned a couple of books. We mentioned uh, The Story of the Soul, which EWTN sells in two editions, mm -hmm. I understand. Laura okay. researched this. All right. And uh, we also have Jean-Pierre de Cossade's uh, uh, Self-Abandonment to Divine Providence. Mm -hmm. Those, I would say are at the core of this, of the spirituality of the little way of spiritual childhood. And a anyone who wishes to undertake it could do no better than to start with those two books. So if you, uh, if you start with those two books, you're going to be in good shape. You're, you're setting the table, as it were, uh, for further exploration. That's right. And in any other subject that you read, theological subject, it will inform, I think, because, as I said, this runs through everything in all the spiritual traditions of the church. Different language, whether it's Benedict's rule or whatever it is, but the same principles are at work there. Very good. I want to thank you, Colin. Thank you, Laura. A fast-moving show, and uh, I want to thank everybody else for their phone calls, for texts and emails and everything else. If you want to watch the show again, go to our website, EWTN.com. I'm Tom Price. On behalf of our fabulous team, we'll see you next time. God bless.